All right, so this is a tutorial on how to do a chi-score test for a genetics cross. In the beginning of the year, we did chi-score tests before. Um, the purpose of the chi-score test was to decide if your data was close enough to your predictions to be acceptable. Because if we just say that we expect, let's just say, three-fourths of plants to be tall, and or 75%, then out of 100 plants, if 70 are tall rather than 75, is that close enough to say, yes, our data fits with what we expected. So this was a way of giving us a mathematical cutoff. So this should sound familiar. The only thing that's changing from the ones that we did at the beginning of the year is that at the beginning of the year, we made a null hypothesis. In other words, we came up with a hypothesis in our experiment that we expected there to be no difference between the different groups. And when we did that, it changed how we figured out our expected. So here's our cross. So let's just say that you were told you were crossing tall red plants um, with another set of tall red plants. And let's just assume that tall is dominant over short and red is dominant over white. And then you are provided with, and you will always be provided with here, the observed results of that cross. So out of our cross of tall red with tall red, we see that 55 offspring were tall and red, 20 were tall and white. 20 were short and red, and 5 were short and white, and our total offspring happens to be, in this case, 100. All right, so before we can do anything else, we need to pre predict what we think the genotypes of our original parents were. And this is nothing new, this is from the last chapter. So if tall is dominant over short, we know that each of our parents has to have a big T because they're tall. And if red is dominant to white, we know they also have to have a big R. So now we need to figure out what that second letter is. And our clue is looking at the offspring. We see that some offspring came out white, and we also see that some offspring came out short. In other words, we have offspring showing the recessive trait. Well, the only way we can cross two talls and get some short offspring is if they're heterozygous. And the only way we can cross two reds and get some white offspring is if they're heterozygous. So now we have our predicted genotypes for our two parents. And when we take a test on this, one of the points you'll get is for correctly predicting what you think the genotypes of the parents are. And again, that's how you're going to do it. You're going to first pay attention to, do they show the dominant or the recessive trait? And then look at the offspring to see if they show the dominant trait, do they need to be carriers of the recessive trait in order for, uh, for those offspring to have appeared? All right, so now that we've got our parents, let's figure out what fraction of offspring should be tall and red, tall and white, short and red, and short and white. So we're gonna use the product rule because that's the easiest way to do this. And we've done this before. So using the product rule, we see that three fourths of the offspring we would have expected to be tall and one fourth we would expect to be short. And we're gonna cross our reds and they were also heterozygous. So again, we would expect three-fourths of the offspring to be red and one-fourth to be white. Okay, so if we want to know how many we expect it to be tall and red, three-fourths times three-fourths gives me nine-sixteenths. And the fraction we would expect to be tall and white would be three-fourths times one-fourth, or three-sixteenths. Short and red, also three-sixteenths. And then short and white would be one-fourth times one-fourth, or one-sixteenth. If you need help with that, that part of the chi-score test, then you need to go back and review how to do uh, the product rule. All right, now we've got our fractions. Now, to figure out how many out of our actual offspring that should be, we need to use our total. Since there were 100 offspring, we need our expected to also add up to 100. So our observed were 100 offspring. If it was 500, then our expected should add up to 500. If it was 750, our expected should add up to 750. So out of 100 offspring, we can figure out how many would 9 sixteenths of 100 offspring be. And we're going to round here. This actually comes out to, I believe, 56.25. We're just going to round down and make it whole numbers since you can't have a quarter of an offspring. And my recommendation would be to go ahead and round up or round down to get whole numbers. Unless you were to, for some reason, get exactly 0.5, then I would say maybe just leave it as 0.5. Um, again, 3 sixteenths times our total 
gives us, again, this, I'm rounding, 19. 3 16 of our total is 19. And 1 16th of our total of 100 is 6. So now we have our observed and our expected. Going back to chapter 1, and remember, you will be provided with this formula. The formula for chi-squared is observed minus expected squared over expected. So now we're just plugging in our numbers. So our observed was 55 minus 56 squared over 56. And I would suggest rounding these to the hundredths place because the table that we're going to use in the end rounds to the hundredths place. So we get 0.02. Our second one, 20 minus 19 squared over 19 gives us 0 0.05. This is going to be exactly the same, 20 minus 19 squared over 19, 0 0.05. And our last one is going to be 5 minus 6 squared over 6 is going to be 0.17. And now we're going to add that up because it's technically the sum of all the observed um, minus expected squared over expected. So when we add all those up, we get 0.29. So this 0.29, this is our chi-squared. So this is chi-squared right here. All right, our last step. So we've done all of our work. We need to know if our test passes or not. If it passes, we're going to accept that those genotypes fit, uh, our prediction basically fits with the offspring that we have. If it fails, then we can say that there's lots of reasons it could fail. We would basically say that we're wrong that those genotypes don't match with the offspring that we got. But the reason might not be because we made a mistake. It could be that it's a sex link trait, or uh, it was a small sample size, or maybe this is controlled by a third like color enhancer gene or polygenic inheritance, or there's maybe something about this trait that we're, we didn't realize. It's not as simple as just a regular dihybrid cross. All right, so how do we determine if it passes or not? We have our number. We're going to go up here to this chi-score table, which, of course, will be provided for you. Just like at the beginning of the year, we're going to ignore the 0.01 line. We're going to be reading the 0.05 line. And this is going to give us our cutoff number. In other words, if our number is smaller than that cutoff number, our chi-score test is going to pass. Now, notice the degrees of freedom. One, two, three. If you don't remember, the way that we figured out our degrees of freedom was the number of options minus one. So in the case of a genetics cross, that's going to be the number of phenotypes of the offspring minus one. So there were four phenotypes right here. Tall red, tall white, short red, short white, four minus one. Our degrees of freedom is three. So our cutoff number, or it's also called our critical value, is 7.82. That's our cutoff or our critical value. Since our chi-square calculation is lower than that, our chi-square passes meaning that our data does fit within range of where we would expect it to come out if these were the correct genotypes for the parents. That's basically what we're saying, that yes, even though we didn't get the exact numbers that we observed, we got numbers close enough that we could say that it could just be due to random chance that our numbers are not exactly right on the money. If our answer for chi-square was bigger than 7.82, then it would fail. It would, we would say that our numbers do not fall within range, that our numbers are so far outside that even due to random chance, they shouldn't be off by that much, and our chi-score would fail. And we would either need to retest, rethink what the parents might be, investigate if it's a different kind of trait and not the trait that we expected it to be, etc. So this is a sample with a dihybrid cross, but you can do this for any kind of cross. It could be a sex link cross. It could just be a regular monohybrid cross. But again, to, uh, to reiterate what you're doing, they're going to always give you the, the phenotypes of the parents, and they're always going to give you the observed. What you need to do is predict what you think the genotypes of the parents are. From those genotypes, figure out the fraction of individuals that should show, to get your expected, that should show each of the traits. So you get your fractions. In this case, we use the product rule. But if it was just a simple cross, for example, if we were just looking at tall, then our fractions would just be three-fourths. One fourth. Multiply those times the total number of offspring to give us the actual number of expected offspring out of that total that would show the trait. Plug it into the chi-square formula, add them all up, and then compare our chi-square answer to the correct number on the table. 
using our degrees of freedom. If our number is smaller, it passes. If our number is bigger, it fails.